How's it going guys? What you're going to see today uh, is some MG4 support footage with infantry tips uh, and basically video tips as I go with regard to infantry and support. Uh, I'm using the MG4 which is one of, well by far the best LMGs in the game. If you tap and burst fire which I'll talk about uh, coming up, this thing is an absolute laser beam with a high fire rate and a huge magazine size of 200. So that's absolutely amazing when it comes to big flanks and this is the main point I wanted to get into flanking is probably the most underrated way of getting wins in any FPS you'll ever play St getting behind enemy lines making sure you're not spotted and taking them out from behind because a lot of the time an enemy that doesn't know you're there you will have well you will absolutely have the advantage on them 100% of the time but on top of all that you can take on three or four at once in this case you'll see I think this is a 10 streak before I kill myself but this is a nice example here getting behind the defense they don't know I'm here I'm able to take them out before a lot of them are even able to react I think that's five already and a lot of the time there's a big debate though uh, because in this case here as you saw I had the choice to go for B to take B flag and that's another key point before I interrupt myself again I always take out spawn beacons uh, and tugs and other things that tip off where the enemy is or where you are because the enemy's trying to tip off where you are take those out it makes things so much easier for you and your teammates i didn't have a suppressor in this case because keeping myself off the minimap when you're flanking is probably the most critical aspect of getting tons of kills and this is how i get myself killed in the idiotic fashion i was pre-firing peeking this corner because that's the best way to deal with people around corners for the most part uh Especially if you have the numbers advantage because you see all my teammates beside me. Just let him run directly in your bullets when he gets greedy because most of them will. Another tip there before I get back to my original point. If you're a medic or you're a support, especially if you're a support guy, throw down med packs for any or no reason at all. Even if you're in the middle of nowhere, just throw them down. Your teammates will run into them. Ideally, for the most part, if you're playing an infantry map, just throw it anywhere near a bunch of people. And not only is it free points, but you're highly benefiting the team. Because a, a teammate that's out of ammo can't possibly help to actually play the objective. So you giving him ammo is essentially you playing the objective on top of him doing the same thing. So throw down ammo packs whenever you can, wherever you are. Uh, but getting back to it, this is what the main thing I want to talk about with flanking. I've always been doing it my whole entire FPS queer, uh, career. I mean, hobby. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I'd say f flanking is the main reason and big difference of why teams and players have repetitive great success. Being able to get behind a team when they're not sure it's coming uh, does you a world of benefit in terms of not only getting kills, but uh, especially because Battlefield, especially Conquest, is basically a gigantic fight for room. It's not about KD. It's not about getting the most kills, although it, there's absolutely no... Uh, wrong problems with the hat. There's no downside to that. It's about a fight for space and Operation Locker here with the odd amount of flags. Most t most uh, levels on average you'll see is you'll keep your two and it's a fight for the middle and it's always a fight for C and usually I've time for the most part in Operation Locker here is the first team to get C and throw all their people near C with maybe a couple stragglers that make sure that the flanks are covered on the outside of the snow portion are covered it's it's a wrap that's it you win but uh like i'm saying flanking is huge and in the opening clip you saw me i had the choice like i said to go for b or a and take flags further into their territory or to go up and try and kill a whole bunch of people that are hugging and trying to push for c and i chose to go for the kills and of course it's level and circumstance dependent uh i did take the gamble because i didn't have a suppressor to keep myself off the mini map and had i been caught it might not have gone as well or gone as well but in that case i was able to go and kill 10 people and you'd say great that's 10 more people killed and of course that's great but the thing is that's pushing people off of their objective Killing those 10 people basically opened the floodgates, per se. My whole team that was on C and, and pushing back the people that were on C could now go to the area that I just cleared and make a push for B. So now I'm not pushing A or B all by myself. Now I have half my team doing it with me. What do you think the, the odds are of success if I have my entire team, which have A, B, and C already, and we're pushing B, or me just going for A, 
with a certain couple, at least if they're intelligent, spawning back on A to try and take me out before I get that flag. Now, obviously the answer is, it's the answer is pretty obvious, it's you want as many as possible. Uh, that being said, there are circumstances, like you'll see it here, there are a lot of circumstances where you don't have that option to go and flank because you see people constantly coming out of their spawn, you might get shot from behind the second you turn the corner, uh, or maybe, uh, like in this case here, I'm just trying to go and recapture the flags that, uh, I'm just trying to go and recapture the flags that we had lost, because this is not uh, conducive to winning here, because we were in some trouble here. You, Because that's another tip I like to use, and as much as it seems obvious, I see so many people that completely ignore or don't even consider this, you can't give up your own flags. You just can't. It's a surefire, and this was just terrible uh, hip firing on the run with an LMG. You can't give up your own flags. Absolutely make an effort to go back and recapture your own flags. And before you leave, make sure you check for any enemy spawn beacons or enemy stragglers that are in the area. Because if you leave the area and you constantly see your flag go right back to flashing because you didn't clear the area, then you're just going to be taking more people off of the objective or off of C in the most part just to go back and retake a flag that you probably should have cleared in the first place before pushing another flag. I cannot emphasize that enough. Most of the subscribers that, uh, most of the subscribers you guys that are constantly watch my videos give me feedback tips and that. You probably already know that. It's, I mean, it's pretty common sense as long as you've been around my videos, uh, or other bigger YouTubers videos who pretty much preach the same thing because it's obvious. And here's an example of what not to do. In a circumstance where he's behind cover and he has the advantage because he knows you're there. Do not get greedy like I did here and basically feed him a kill because, like, I didn't know he was there. I knew, he, well, I knew he was there because I was listening. I was listening through the headset. I saw he was there. You saw it earlier because I was looking for him. The difference being he had cover and he had the advantage. He was already looking out. I bet you he felt, he felt I was already there. Or maybe he thought a teammate of mine was there and it turned out to be me that got killed. Uh, what I should have done was flank around him through a doorway or from the above section. So, uh, unless you were going to pre-fire into that corner. But that's a circumstance to avoid, like I was saying. And then another example there. I like to let, as cheap as it is, sometimes my teammates basically run into an area first to let me know where the enemy is. In that case, you saw my teammate run around the corner and through the corridor, and it basically tipped me off that there was a guy on the second floor based on where the gun sound was and the fact that there were bullets coming in the door. It allowed me to get that kill before I walked in the door. So sometimes allowing your teammates to run out there, as much as it might be cheap, and you'd say that's not, that is kind of cheap, I think it's intelligent strategy for the most part. Because, I mean, you're looking out for the best circumstance for yourself. And as much as most people would say that's cheap, I was able to clear two more guys of that area before that one guy flanked me from behind. Had I actually checked the right before I turned the corner, allowing my teammates to run in there blind. Because uh, a lot of people do that. They don't check their corners. They won't uh, walk into an area. Because a lot of, like, you see me running around these corners. You shouldn't be doing that for the most part. You should always be cautious approaching the corner. You might want to peek it, you might want to just listen up in your headset for footsteps, gunfire, something of that sort. But for the most part when you're running with teammates here, especially if they are in the lead, they'll take the fire first. So you can afford to run in a lot of circumstances. Uh, the other thing is when I'm taking a, uh, a flag, I'll slow down and I'll even stop in certain sections. Because uh, the last thing you want when you're capturing a flag is to continually move around. And the reason for that is your eyes, uh, from like a biological perspective, are drawn to movement. That's a big key. And when you're when you're standing still and you're focusing, like say your uh, your center crosshairs on a doorway, expecting enemies to come in, you're going to have an extreme advantage because you're not moving. Your eyes will pick up the movement first, and you'll get the draw on him. That's probably one of the best ways I like to do it. Uh, another tip is you'll see in multiple circumstances in other videos and I'll, I'll break down all of these individual tips in separate videos if you want to see illustrative examples of them because I know it's a bit rushed and I know I didn't really screen capture a lot of them together but I just wanted to give you an overall infantry gameplay because I don't feel I cover the infantry gameplays enough because 
I do post a lot of good matches, I, or I do get a lot of good matches, but I don't really post them enough. Uh, but they're great fun, and I, I have a great a lot of enjoyment watching them. Uh, but you'll notice that's that's such the key part with flanking here. Look at look at what you're able to do if you're appropriately able to flank from behind or from the sides. Look how many guys I'm able to take out, and look how much ground we're gaining before we push them back off their flag. Look, and then I'm gonna throw an ammo box. Look at all the points I'm gonna get. So many points, so many ways to actually help your teammate out here. Just continually throw ammo boxes everywhere. But that's basically it for what I had here. Those were some brief tips, and I know they weren't sequenced perfectly with the video, I understand. Uh, I will post separate video tips for infantry if you'd like to see more, because I have been th considering a series as of late uh, where I was going to give uh, bad habits and how to fix them per se. Uh, and I was going to break down each individual tips in each with a separate video to show you those problems. So... If you'd like to see those, let me know. If you'd like to see individual circumstances broken down, let me know. And I'll most definitely post them. But I hope you enjoyed this one for the most part as I was sort of rambling on as I went giving little tips. Flanking's huge. Don't forget that. See you later.